morning. We welcome you here uh, in three different ways. We're still doing that. In person in the building, outside in our drive-in, we welcome you, and uh, the live stream on the website as well as Facebook. We have a reminder too that we uh, have three ways of giving. You can give and make a donation online at the offering box at the door, or you can mail in a check and that would be much appreciated. Also, we have prayer cards and um, if you have a prayer request, you can go ahead and put the prayer request over there and we'll make sure that uh, the proper people get it. Also, we're launching myhebroncc.online uh, shortcut to the website. Uh, so that's something that you can take a look at when you're looking at our uh, services. There's a lot on that website. Christmas, we're supporting two families through the Salvation Army, the Adopt-A-Family. So if you'd like to sign up, and buy a gift, visit our Facebook page for the sign-up link, and then that'll take you to where you, they're posted, and you can go ahead and reserve a gift that you'd like to purchase. Also, our Christmas Eve service will not be here in person, in person worship, sure, <laughs> person worship, easy for me to say, but we invite you to visit our webpage for a special presentation on Christmas Eve, so we will be doing that. All right, so this morning we ask that you, um, we have the opportunity to just pray and uh, lift our hearts to our Father. So if you will join me. We lift our hearts to you, Lord, maker of heaven and earth. We praise you and honor you. You hold our lives in your hands. We are thankful for your love and your mercy that is new every day. As we look forward in this holy season of Advent, we are mindful of your good plans for us and that you sent your baby son to be the light in this dark world and our hope now and in ages come. Emmanuel, God with us, how you love us, Lord. We pray now that prayer that Jesus gave when he taught us to pray. So if you'd pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Tina. Good morning. Thank you. Well, good morning, church. It's a good day to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Well, today is the second Sunday of Advent, and Advent is the word that we use in the church to describe the season and feeling of expectation and hope and joy and peace and gratitude and wonder and amazement that surrounds the celebration of the birth, the coming into being, the stepping into the flesh, the entering into the arrival of Jesus the Christ. So throughout this season of Advent, you will hear me quoting Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. So this is Old Testament, and so we know that this is before Jesus, the promised Messiah, had come. And the people were walking in darkness, walking in ignorance and rebellion and sin. They were consumed by their circumstances. They were tripped up by the things right in front of them. They had been trying to find their way on their own. They were depressed and hopeless with only the thought of death to comfort them. And I feel like this year of 2020 has given us a greater appreciation for these people than we've ever had before. In many ways, it feels like we have been walking through darkness this year. Walking through a time of uncertainty and fear, frustration and confusion, illness and lack. And so we see a little more clearly the profound reality of this verse. The people were walking in darkness and in need of a great light. In need of truth and life and hope like never before. Well, in these four weeks of Advent, we are looking at Jesus, this great light that stepped onto the earth and changed the world. And so today, the theme of Advent is peace, and I want to look at how Jesus is the light of the way, the light that brings peace and security. In John 
uh, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, Jesus came to light the way, to be the way, the way to the Father, the way to life, the way to hope and peace and purpose. The scripture tells us that Jesus is the only way, that through his shed blood on the cross, he paid our sin debt in full, which means that we have been washed in grace and granted forgiveness for our sins. The blood of Jesus has the power to forgive all of our sins, and because of that forgiveness, that grace, we can enter into the presence of God. And when God looks at us, he sees us through that lens of righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus. And that's what it is that makes us clean and whole. It's, it's Jesus. He's the way. And not only is Jesus the way, but he is also the light of the way. And here's what I mean when I say that. When we come to Jesus, when we make him Lord of our lives, when we ask him to be Savior, not only does he receive us and bless us and forgive us, but he promises to be with us and to never ever forsake us to help us and guide us on the pathway of life see we have the word of god to help and give us direction psalm 119 says your lamp is a, your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path now i've never really been a fan of walking i know people who love to walk some who walk a few miles a day some who even take this walking thing and turn it into a hiking thing or a, a running thing. Honestly, if you ever see me running, you should assume someone is chasing me because that's the only time I ever run. But I know someone, I got an amen over there. I know someone who actually ran 100 miles in a 24-hour period of time, and to me, that's just crazy. And the thought of running through the night on a dark dirt path, it just seems a little bit scary to me for many reasons. I can only imagine how intimidating it must be to try to traverse a dirt path in the darkness. You see, it's difficult and, and, and sometimes even dangerous to even just walk in the dark. But when you, when you have some light and you can see the way ahead of you, well, what a difference that light makes, yes? And that's what God's word is. It is a lamp to your feet. It helps light your path so that you can find the way through the darkness. Scripture tells us in John 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light in the darkness the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, the word will light your path. And the word is Jesus. Jesus will be a light to your way. He will illuminate the path ahead of you. He will speak to you and teach you and help you navigate your way in this life. The word is powerful. And when we read the word, we can find direction. See, God didn't expect us to just know how to be obedient to him, how to live a life that glorifies him. So he's given us his word as a tool for us to use to learn more about him and to learn to follow after his ways. And when we read it, he speaks to us. And as he speaks, we can begin to understand better how to navigate our lives, how to orient our lives in such a way that we can bring glory to his name and find victory in our journey. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us this, For the word of God is active and alive, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even, the, even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. The word, not just the words on the page, but the guidance of the Holy Spirit that speaks through the word and through Jesus who is the word. The word is alive and active and that word helps light the way. And knowing that we have light for the way means that we don't have to worry about being alone or walking in darkness or finding ourselves in situations where we have no answers, no hope because we have hope 
in him. He is the answer. He is the light. And he walks with us all the days of our lives. And knowing that, understanding the reality of that, means that we can have peace. Peace that passes understanding. Peace that we can depend on. Not only does Jesus light the way, he's the light of the way that brings peace. He brings us also security so that we don't need to walk in fear. See, not only is it difficult to walk on a dark path, but darkness in general can be intimidating, yes? And many people, especially children, are afraid of the dark. Even as adults, we can feel that fear of darkness, like when you hear a noise in the house in the middle of the night, or if you watch a scary movie before you go to bed and you can't sleep and you just toss and turn in the darkness with this unsettling feeling in your soul. Honestly, being afraid of the dark is not just for children. When I was younger, I remember that my mom and my brother, they loved to read, and I was always jealous of that because I hate to read. I struggle with reading, and I avoid it whenever possible. And I'm kind of more of a, you know what, I'll wait till they make the movie, and I'll go see the movie kind of person. But they love to read. And I remember how they got so excited when Stephen King would come out with a new book. And I had seen a few of the movies and, that were based on his books, and I found them to be rather horrifying. And I remember seeing an interview with Stephen King once. And in the interview, he talked about his daily writing routine. And he said that he always only writes in the morning. And the interviewer asked whether he had ever wrote at night. And his reply was, are you kidding? Not with the stuff I write. See, even Stephen King knows the power of darkness and how intimidating it can be. But light dispels fear. It provides security. That's why we light our streets and our homes at night. That's why our children often request night lights. Darkness is scary, but light is is comforting, and it helps us to feel more secure. And well, that's what Jesus does too. Jesus lights the way. He offers the protection of that light. He provides security. God says in Hebrews, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you, so that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What shall men do to me? And the scripture says too that we don't even need to be afraid of our spiritual enemy, the devil. In 2 Thessalonians 3, it says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. You see, it's the job of the shepherd to guard and to protect the sheep. And Jesus is the good shepherd. He says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will ever be able to snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. That's security. Romans 8 says this, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, Jesus says, Fear not, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus, the light of the way, is also the strong tower of protection that we can run into and be safe. Be confident, fear not in what the future holds, for we know the God who holds the future. Our days on this earth are numbered, and even though we will know difficulty in this life, we can walk through those times of grief and heartache and pain without fear, knowing peace regardless of our circumstances because Jesus is that peace. You know, I talk a lot with people who struggle with their meaning, their purpose. See, they realize that they've spent so much so much of their lives chasing after the things of the world, orienting their lives around the things that the world says will bring happiness and wholeness, but they end up feeling empty surrounded by people but feeling alone, left searching and wandering like people walking in darkness in need of a great light. So maybe, maybe you're feeling that way today. Maybe the events of this year have left you disillusioned and distressed. 
Maybe this season has left you feeling empty and alone, and I, I can tell you that it's normal and natural to go through emotions like that in this world, to be caught in the emotional roller coaster of living and doing and being. We all have bad days and tough times. We experience grief and pain and anxiety. And as we go through those ups and downs in life, we can choose to navigate those the way the world tells us, or we can choose to navigate those the way Jesus showed us. See, Jesus, he went through some stuff as he walked through this world. He had stress in his life. He had people wanting things from him and others trying to complicate the work that God had sent him to do. He experienced the emotional roller coaster that comes with life on this earth, and he gave us, he taught us, he modeled for us the importance of being grounded in the word and the ways of the Father. We can learn to do the same thing, to follow the example of Jesus. That's one way that he is the light of the way for us. And so what do we see Jesus do? Well, Jesus spent time in communication with the Father. Often early in the morning, he would find some time away from everyone else to pray and to sit in God's presence and to hear his voice, to find strength and peace and guidance for each day, for every situation that he came up against. He would seek the will and the way of the Father. What else did Jesus do? Well, he knew the word of God. We can read in Matthew and also in Luke that Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and during that time the devil came to him and tempted him. And we can read more detail about that in the word, but in a nutshell, the devil came with the temptation to be relevant, the temptation to be spectacular, and the temptation to be powerful. And each and every time Jesus answered back to him, it is written. You see, Jesus knew God's word and he knew it well enough to apply it to his life. What else did Jesus do? Well, even though Jesus knew that he came to this earth to fulfill the covenant, to become that sacrifice for our sins, still he walked on this earth as a human being just like us. And in his humanness, he didn't want to die a painful death. But he didn't deny his humanness. He cried out to the Father and he agonized in prayer in the garden, anticipating the path ahead of him. He said, my Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He said, God, is there another way? I don't really want to walk this road. I don't want to suffer like that. Is there another way? Well, Jesus knew, of course, that there was not another way. That this was the way that it had to be. But in his human condition, he, just like us, wrestled with the reality of what God had called and ordained him to do. I don't know about you, but I have days when I cry out to God too. And I say, God, can't you find somebody else? I don't want to walk this road. Jesus, he knew that we would feel like that sometimes. And it's a comfort to us that he felt that way sometimes too. Jesus didn't turn away from those times. Instead, he ran to the Father. He brought his emotions to God. <clears throat> Father, I'm struggling with this. Help me. Give me strength and courage to do what it is that you've called me to do. Remind me of your truth. Build me up in your grace. Encourage me with your love. See, Jesus is the light of the way. He lights the way he shows us that we need to be in communication with the father that we need to know the word and that we need to bring our everything to god our hopes our fears our doubts bring those things to the cross and say father i'm struggling with this help me give me strength and courage to do what you have called me to do remind me of your truth build me up in your grace encourage me with your love. See, the people walking in darkness, they need a light. And Jesus is the light of the way, showing us how to live in victory on this earth. For he alone is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. Amen? Let's pray.
Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day, for the opportunity that you give us to come around your word, to come into your fellowship, to enter into your presence. God, we're so grateful that you always are the one saying, come, come to me. Bring it all to me. Bring me your joys. Bring me your fears. Bring me your worries. Bring me the, the burdens that you're carrying, and I will help you, and I will rejoice with you. God, we're so grateful that you love us so much, that you hold us so close. God, I pray that you would help us to remember the reality of your love, the reality of your presence in our lives as we face these difficult times, as the emotional roller coaster that we are on sometimes threatens to swallow us. God, I pray that you would that you would be that light shining in the darkness, that you would light our way, our path. Show us always how to come back to you. How we thank you and we praise you for everything you are and everything you do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know what the Lord is speaking to your heart today, but your invitation is to identify what next steps he might be calling you to take. Maybe it's conversation, maybe it's information, maybe it's a decision that you already know he's been tugging at your heart to make, and today is the day you decide to take that next step. Whatever it is that Jesus is calling you to, we would invite you to reach out to us if we can be an encouragement to you in any way as you take that next step that he's uh, called you to take. So now as we begin to prepare our hearts to celebrate communion, we say goodbye to our live stream audience. And we invite you to connect with our communion video if you'd like some assistance as you celebrate communion, as is our custom to do every week as disciples of Christ. And so to our live stream audience, we say thank you for joining us and may the peace of the Lord be with you. And now to here in-house as we continue, uh, we're first going to take a